Hi everyone, I'm Jess Blankshane from the National Security Affairs Department at the U.S. Naval War College. Everything I'm about to say represents my own personal views, not those of my employer. Today, we're going to introduce the idea of foreign policy making as two-level game. This is intended to complement your assigned readings from chapters 9 and 10 of your Decision Making in American Foreign Policy textbook. As we discussed previously, this course uses three main theoretical constructs to analyze foreign policy decision making. Levels of analysis, our set of analytical perspectives, and two-level games. Today, we're going to look at two-level games, which views foreign policy decision making as the overlap of two bargaining games, one international and one domestic. This is a way of thinking about how factors at the different levels of analysis that we discussed previously interact and work together to affect policy. We'll start by talking about the general idea of foreign policy as, as overlapping international and domestic negotiations, and then we'll talk about key terms associated with this theoretical framework. The idea of foreign policy as two-level game comes from work by Robert Putnam. Scholars and practitioners had long recognized that both international and domestic politics mattered for foreign policy, they were linked, but Putnam created this model to help us understand when and how domestic and international factors interact to influence policy. Putnam described policy as the result of a negotiation game happening on two levels, one international and one domestic. Each state is represented by a lead negotiator. The lead negotiators bargain with each other over policy at the international table, but each must also answer to domestic constituencies bargaining at that level over what policies are acceptable at home. These domestic constituencies might include the legislature or parts of the executive branch bureaucracy or interest groups representing parts of the domestic public, among others. For simplicity, I've illustrated the two-level game here using a bilateral negotiation between two countries, but you can also analyze multilateral negotiations using this framework by adding more negotiators and more domestic tables around the international table. In stark contrast to the unitary state perspective, which assumed agreed upon national interests, objectives, and beliefs about the world, two-level games explicitly assumes there is domestic disagreement about these things that must be worked out through negotiation. So in this view, policy is affected both by the structure and character of states' domestic political systems, but also by the structure and character of the international political system. There are a few key terms that are important for understanding Putnam's two-level games model. The first term is win sets. A state's win set is the set of policies that are acceptable domestically, those policies that might realistically be ratified and implemented. The win set is determined by the preferences and bargaining power of various domestic constituencies. For lead negotiators, win set size creates a trade-off. A large domestic win set makes it easier to come to an international agreement because there are more policies on the table, but a large win set also makes it harder for the negotiator to stand firm on preferred policies if other states know that they have wiggle room at home and that other policies would likely also be accepted. That brings us to the ideas of ratification and involuntary defection. Ratification is the process by which policy is approved or agreed to domestically and may have both formal and informal components. If the lead negotiator agrees to a deal at the international table that isn't able to be ratified domestically, we call this involuntary defection. The threat of involuntary defection can actually be a useful negotiating tool, but involuntary defection can also threaten the negotiator's domestic status and international credibility. There's a temptation to think of this framework as applying only to liberal democracies, but even authoritarian leaders face constraints and risk involuntary defection. The ratification process is just different depending on what type of regime and what country we're looking at. The dynamics of the two-level game depend on the type of disagreement domestically within a state. Putnam calls these boundary versus factional conflicts. In a boundary conflict, 
almost all of the domestic constituencies agree on their preferred outcomes, but they disagree about the acceptability of the status quo and how hard they should push to achieve their preferred outcome. For example, all domestic constituencies might agree that they prefer that another state not obtain nuclear weapons or that they would prefer that a foreign leader no longer be in power, but they might disagree over how hard to push to achieve these outcomes. In a factional conflict, different domestic constituencies actually have very different preferences over outcomes. For example, in trade negotiations, representatives of major corporations and representatives of labor unions might actually have different preferences over, they want to ha over what they want to happen. Coalitions might even form between like-minded constituencies in different states. Synergistic linkages occur when international negotiations actually create options at the domestic negotiating table. For example, domestic constituencies may be willing to accept environmental or safety regulations in return for job creation. But there may be a situation where jobs can only be created through international tr trade negotiations that open export markets. The two-level game framework is most straightforward when applied to bilateral or multilateral negotiations like the trade deals or nuclear non-proliferation agreements I've been hinting at as examples, but it can also be used to analyze other types of foreign policy decisions. The reactions of other states, which are shaped by their domestic political systems, nearly always affect the outcomes associated with foreign policy actions. To use the two-level games framework, we need an understanding of both the international system what international organizations might host negotiations, what norms might parties feel obligated to abide by in their international negotiations. But we also need an understanding of the domestic political systems of all parties involved. Many of the foreign policy analysis tools we've, been, we've discussed have been designed with the US government and US foreign policy decision-making in mind. We need to think carefully about applying these tools to other states, which assumptions are still applicable and which ones might we have to change to analyze another state's foreign policy decision making. How much information do we have about the inner workings of each state? As we've discussed, our different tools require different levels of information as inputs in order to explain and predict policy. In some cases, these questions may be difficult to answer, but it's still important to remember that all states have domestic political systems that influence their foreign policy, even if those states aren't necessarily the primary focus of the analyst's work. That was your brief introduction to two-level games, and it completes our overview of the major theoretical constructs used in this course. Thanks for watching.